How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here, and when I say Milton Bradley, you're probably thinking of games like Connect 4 or uh, Operation. I guess Twister would be included in that too. That's a Milton Bradley game. Candyland, personal favorite of mine. Milton Bradley's done a lot of board games, but they even came out with a few Nintendo games as well. In fact, there are nine games published by Milton Bradley. We're gonna cover them all in this video, gonna rank them along the way as well, and hopefully you can join me. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. I do about two videos a week. I'm a huge old school gamer. I like the new stuff too, and I like checking out new technology, but uh, you know, retro gaming is my passion for sure. So make sure you're subscribed. I always got something new coming up. Starting off with Abadox, The Deadly Inner War. This game's cool because it featured some horror elements that you don't really see in the NES games a whole lot, um, like the flying eyeballs. I was just like, oh my god, this game, <laughs> this game's all right. It may be still to this day the only shooter that I've played, like Shoot 'Em Up, that you scroll um, vertically going downward. You know, because usually it's like you know, like you're you're down here and you're shooting up. Uh, but this game features stages where like you're at the top and you're shooting down. Which is it was just kind of a unique gameplay. So. You know, props to Abadox for hooking that up. I still have no idea what Abadox even means. <laughs> um, Abadox has a lot going on for itself, and I'm a huge fan of Abadox. Um, great shooter in and of itself. Pick up power-ups. I mean, it's 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 great. It's fun. Um, and I'm putting Abadox as an A. Cabal's a fun one. I liked Cabal. I played a lot of Cabal in the uh, arcade. When I say arcade, I mean the gas station down the street from my house. My friend and I would pop in quarters, uh, play Cabal. This game uses a trackball at the arcade, so I was curious about if they're, how they're going to do it with the NES, and it actually turns out pretty well. It's easy to control. Wild Gun style, you're over the shoulder, and you sh see everything in front of you, and you just have to shoot enough enemies uh, to move on to the next stage. Um, but I like this game because not only could you pick up like machine guns and grenades and stuff like that, but you could shoot down the buildings. Like, you know, like sometimes enemies would be hiding behind the buildings or hiding behind trees or whatever. Shoot them down. They have nothing to hide behind. Of course, you have your wall, and they're going to shoot that down too. Um, big fan of Cabal, and I like this game quite a bit. I'm putting it as a B. The NES came out with the California games, um, and without going into too much detail, yes, there are some extra events on here, like you're seeing the roller skating and me failing miserably. <laughs> at it. Um, the, uh, the Atari 2600 version of California Games is better than this one. Uh, I'm putting California Games for the NES as a solid F. <laughs> Captain Skyhawk is a decent shooter. It's actually from Rare. Uh, Rare developed it. Uh, Milton Bradley published it. Uh, think if Rare made Zaxxon. It's a little bit like that, kind of. Um, you can you know, can raise and lower your altitude, and then you just move left and right. Um, big sprites, big enemies, sometimes that works to your disadvantage because you don't see things as they're coming up because you have to have to move through the canyons and you know avoid the walls and all that. It's it's pretty fun. Captain Skyhawk's okay. I'm putting it as a C. It's great. It, it could have been better, but it's um you know it's, it's I think it's worth checking out. It's another game from Rare called Digger T Rock Legend of the Lost City. I wanted to make sure I got it right there. This may be the game on the list where you're like, uh, that game's made up. I never heard of it. <laughs> and I promise you it's a real game. Um, and it's okay. Um, I was hoping for more Dig Dug style, but it's just, it's kind of like a, if Super Pitfall was good, <laughs> it may be this game. <laughs> it's, um, you, you can go around and you have your shovel. Your shovel's your weapon too. You can hit enemies with it. Uh, but you can also dig down and collect stuff. And um, I, I haven't played it really in depth, but I like what I've played of it. I mean, it's just, it's okay, you know, for what it is. It's okay for what it is. Um, it's a, it's a C. Jordan vs. Bird one-on-one -on -one basketball was was super popular when it came out. I was like, oh my god, you could play as... Because it wasn't just like, you know, basketball. It was, you could play as Michael Jordan, you could play as Larry Bird, um, especially at the time, you know, the, the two biggest names in basketball. And you can play, um, you can play either of them. Um, just, you know, games of one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, however, to me, the selling point for this game was the slam dunk competition. I mean, that was the best part. I just, um, I have zero memory of me ever playing the actual one-on-one. -on -one. I only remember doing the uh, the slam dunk contest. You can either take turns or do um, like challenge. It's like, you know, I do one, then you do one kind of thing. So um, I had a lot of fun with that one. It's, um, I'm, I'll, I'll put it as a C also, um, if anything, just because, I mean, the basketball stuff couldn't care less for, but the slam dunk competition, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, Marvel Madness is a game I keep coming back to. Marvel Madness is one of those games I say I like, um, and then I suck at it. But I just I, I love how quirky it is. I got to give it up for the quirkiness of what Marvel Madness is all about. Because like you know, the different the different ways you can die, the different ways uh, you can you know shatter yourself, uh, the other enemies that like swallow you, or the the acid that disintegrates you. I thought that was the coolest thing ever, um, and the momentum of it. I mean, even playing with the, playing this game with the D-pad. It actually feels pretty decent. Um, prefer the trackball, of course, but 
Marble Madness on the NES, it actually played decently, and um, yeah, I've never beaten it without a Game Genie. I've gotten pretty far. I've gotten to the part where you have to like go uphill, <laughs> but um, this is super super difficult, but um, fun and just an iconic game for sure. Um, I, I'll put it as a C. I mean, you might have it as an A, but you also might have it as an F. It's, this, this game, Marble Madness, is just one of those games that it could be it could be anywhere on anyone's list. For me, it's a solid C. It's a decent game. Come back to it every once in a while. I like the arcade version, but you know the NES version is actually not bad. Oh my goodness! Do you have time to talk about? my Time Lord and Savior. Time Lord is one of my biggest guilty pleasure games for the NES, and I gotta do a guilty pleasure list sometime in the near future. I can't tell you why I like this game so much, I honestly don't know. It was a game I hadn't even heard of, never rented or anything, but they had it on sale at KB Toys and Hobby back in the day, and I was like, oh, you know what, this game looks kinda fun, I'll pick it up. And it was during a time where you just maximize every Nintendo game you had in your collection. Cause you couldn't just throw it away, you couldn't just go down and get something else, you just, you know, play what you got. And this was that game that I played what I got. You go through different time eras, and in those time eras you find these orbs. You collect the orbs, defeat the boss, move on to the next time era. Sounds simple enough, but how you get the orbs in different stages, there's something different. There's a different gimmick. And you don't know what that gimmick is. Nobody tells you anything. You just have to, like, discover it for yourself. You're just like, well, you know, um, you know, and you can see some of the gameplay footage here where it's like sometimes it's just, you know, in plain sight, you can grab it. And most of the time it's like you can see it, but you can't grab it. You got to do something different. You gotta do something to bring it down or bring it closer to you or something will happen. And um, there's so much going on with this game uh, for its simplicity, yet it's co cool to see what time area you're going to go to next and stuff like that and, and how it all works out. I'm a huge fan of this game. I mean, it's one of those games, I mean, you may have it as a D or an F. I'm putting it as a, as a B. Um, I could put it as an A for nostalgia because it's such a guilty pleasure of mine, but you know, in all honesty for myself, um, I'm putting Time Lord as a B. I, I still like this game. I was having, I just capturing this footage, I was having fun playing it. Looking forward to playing it some more. Well, we have world games. We had California games, we had winter games, and then this is world games. This is games that take place from around the world. So this is the game that will introduce you to things like caber tossing, which is like from Scotland where you take a giant, basically telephone pole, and, and how far can you lob it? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. We got uh, Canadian log rolling, which ain't bad. And by the way, if you ever want to hear 8-bit chip tune, um, the Lumberjack song from Monty Python's Flying Circus, you can find it in this game. There's a fun variety in this game. I mean, it's not the greatest game in the world, and especially, it's, it's a lot like those other kind of games that look like this. It's just, it's, it's there, it's fun, okay, I get it. Um, but there's a little bit of variety in there, so um, I'll put it as a D. Again, it's not great, it's just, but it's fun to see with the variety. Well, I mean, props to Milton Bradley for making some cool NES games. They could have just done Connect 4 on the NES. They could have just done, you know, uh, Operation on the NES, and it would have sold well. But, you know, they went this route to uh, publish some uh, fun games, and um, hopefully you enjoyed this list, and check out these other videos while you're still here, and I thank you for watching, and more videos coming up. Make sure you subscribe, I'll see you again real soon.